Hey guys! So today you and I are going to talk about code. Yeah, we're going to talk about code. So the question in question today is basically, Frederick, if it is true that, well, the average programmer doesn't write all that many lines of code, what do they do with the rest of their day? So this is a fair question. Uh, because there is, there are a few people out there who will give you different numbers of... I'm not saying that necessarily that the exact line numbers here are important, but 50 or 100 lines of code or something like that, right? There's this idea that a person who is writing software, a software developer, has an average of lines of code. Now this, I think, is a bit of a, it's a, it's a kind of funny in my world um, metric to look at and only the absolute worst uh, people who do evaluations on productivity look at lines of code uh, and I argue that they are among the worst people when it comes to evaluating productivity because they don't seem like uh, without understanding what it is that you are actually doing when you're writing software is very, very hard, almost I would say impossible, unless you have some type of baseline case to, de to determine how, if, how productive somebody is or how fast something goes. So w the short answer to this question is literally, if, you un if we're just assuming here that the programmer in question is actually doing their best to, to actually solve this problem. now. If let's say they're writing 50 lines of code or something like that in a day, even less, I've been in situations where I have produced, well, about two lines of code in a day. Total code investment is two lines. Now, what the hell am I doing, right? Why, why, would, why would I not be able to produce more? Well, it's very simple because the problem that I'm solving requires me to pretty much read through most of the code base to figure out where those two lines of code should go. If there is, I get the, but that, you know, when I started, I didn't know. Well, that's always the fun part, well, one of the fun parts about being a programmer, that, that when you get a story, you have, this is, and this is something you kind of have to embrace, you have no idea what the task is going to be. And this is this thing that gets really stressful for a lot of people. And you should, like, it, it's a very dynamic field in the sense that, you don't know what the next thing is going to be. It could be anything. It could be uh, like, and you I mean, if your boss asks you to do something, then you can't really say, no, I, I don't do that sort of stuff. You're just going to have to figure out how to solve it. And this is the thing that I've been telling a few of the people out there uh, who've been say, telling me that, oh, a programmer or a front-end developer or a back-end developer, they're responsible for this and that. And I'm like going, I kind of go, no, you have no idea what you're talking about unless you've worked in this profession you don't know what you're talking about. You can absolutely take the position that you won't do these sorts of things, but most of the time, if you are employed by a company, you do what you're told to do. That's most of what it is. You may not be good at it, but you're, I mean, you're on paid time, so you kind of solve it. So I'm just trying to help you out by explaining to you that it's extremely unlikely that you will just be able to stay within your own little bubble all of the time. Sometimes you can, absolutely, if you're lucky enough to, or whatever you we call it, to be employed in such a fashion, but most of the time you're just gonna have to figure it out, right? And doing this sort of thing is part of it. So being able to produce two lines of code may not sound amazing, but if we consider that in order for me to figure out first and foremost what two lines of code that I needed, because I didn't know that when I started, and the second part of it being that I, pretty much had to go through the whole system and doing like even being able to figure that out in a day I thought was pretty pr I was pretty happy about it because it's it was a big system and the same thing goes for you I mean any amount of code that you're writing right it's not really the case of how many lines of code that this thing correlates to how productive you are it all comes down to what is it that you're actually doing like uh, an example would be that I have helped my coworker out the past, I think five weeks, yeah, roughly five weeks now, 
to, I think that the total, I know this is a little bit more, but it's taking five weeks to write, can it be? Maybe, or maybe 50 lines of code. Let's say 100, just to be sure, but about 100 lines of code. It's taking five weeks to do that. Now, what could possibly, possibly take that long, right? Well, I'll tell you. I've uh, retroactively had to add to, a sp to an application that has been being actively developed, which is fairly front and heavy uh, for, I mean, few, it's roughly four years or something like that. So in retroactively, I have, we have uh, been forced to add CSP headers or content security policy headers, which basically states what and what you can and what you can't add to a page when it loads up into the browser. Now, the reason for this is very simple. You want to secure the application in such a fashion that you can't just pull in arbitrary scripts. You can't inject style tags. You can't inject script tags, all of these things. Now, why would that take five weeks? It's very simple because we have so many different dependencies within the front end code that uh, different libraries that depend on being able to do this. You have all of these different libraries that inject inline styles, they inject scripts, like we have third party script for analytics and stuff like that, that also inject things and then they need to connect out to a network and get the file. So if we're going to, yes, you can imagine, if we're going to change that behavior for all of this and make sure that it still works, five weeks isn't all that long, if you think about it. It's actually not, considering that you have, we have tons and tons of these dependencies that are all doing it all over the place. We need to have us figure out how can we make sure that we verify all the different browsers? How can we make sure that everything still works? We're still not done. Like it's still, uh, still an ongoing st story where we're pretty much forced to, in some situations, to rewrite parts of the application because it was working in a way that very much depended on things working in this fashion. These are the sorts of stories that, I mean, it's, uh, if, you have, if you don't understand the problem that is being solved, 100 lines of code in five weeks is like insanity. But I mean, if you're writing a to-do app, then 100 lines of code in what? A few minutes or like an hour or something like that is for someone who's experienced it's that's nothing right so that's the thing that uh, should be considered most of the time you don't actually see the work that goes into solving the problem it's similar to a it's a, similar to basically any process say a medical examination you might go to your doctor and have a slight cough and then the doctor realized that that shit you have a serious disease and then they need to run more, or they suspect they, that you have a more serious disease. And then you might go to several stages of, through several stages of testing and taking samples and stuff like that. And finally, that all accumulates in a surgical, in a surgical thing or something like that. But that's the only thing you see, like from the outside perspective, that's the only thing you see, like that part. But all the steps that lead up to that. It's a similar thing. Same thing goes for market research when you're in sales or anything like that. You may spend, I don't, I mean, the same legal stuff, whatever. Like, if you're only looking at the end result, it may look like this is, you know, it's nothing. Design, photography, all of these things. You look at the picture, the photo, but you don't consider that, oh, in order to get that big, beautiful um, picture of the Himalayas, you, the person who took that photo actually had to tra raise money and travel to that place and like do all this other stuff that is invisible to you. That's exactly how it works. So what I want you to take away from this is that it is true that sometimes you will write not that okay in a day you might actually not produce all that many lines of code but it has doesn't have like a programmer is program programmers aren't necessarily doing a bad job because just because they're not producing enough lines of code it all comes down to how complicated is the thing that you are working on how much time do you have to re sit and research how much time do you need to try things out, experiment a bit, just figure out how to do it. Because that process, that's the thing that really takes time. Writing out the lines of syntax is usually straightforward when you know what you actually need to do in order to get the thing working. Have a great day.